Don't go away. You won't want to miss part two of our visit with Rebel. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. We're going to continue on with our meeting with Rebel, the one-year-old pit bull mix that has some pretty serious fear issues. We're going to introduce him to a gentle eater so we can get some control over him while he's in my living room and, and put a sort of a stop to this coming back and forth. I'm just going to have Adam hold him so it's easier. Yeah. And are you familiar with how to put these on? I have see I've seen them put on okay. dogs before. So you're going to put this over his nose. Okay. Yep, don't let him get on the couch. Can you hold that? And we're going to put this, and I'll see if it's too tight behind his, um, behind his ears. Okay. So that's just going to go over his nose like that. Okay. And you can use use some of the roast beef. Do you have stuff? I just... Oops. Yep, good. Put that in his mouth. Is it too big? Yes. It's too big. All right, so take it off the side of my tight ears. send you home with this one. This is one that's for a dog downstairs. But... And I want that head piece tight so that it doesn't Sit. come off over his okay. head. So good. Rebel. Rebel. Sit. Yep, and behind his ears. Probably. That feels snug. Yep, that looks good. Okay. okay. So go ahead, let go of, wait a second. Okay, go ahead, you guys can sit down. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you. And if need be, I want you to pick up the other leash mm -hmm. by I'm looking at you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just want to be clear about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, stick this on my pocket. Okay. So. You want me to grab the leash? No, just. Good boy. Or you want a longer one? Want a longer one? No, I think that's all right. Okay. All right, so sit. Sit. Good boy. So you can see right away he doesn't get to control it anymore. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get to control me. He can still have the reinforcements. Oh, we're not going to eat now. <laughs> Sit. Good. Sit. 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 Good boy. That's all I'm asking. Right? That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not asking anything new. He's done it. No, he's done it many, many times. Now we're tangled, so. Hmm? You're a But. He's also just lost his control of the situation. Does he want to eat it? Okay. Good boy. What do you think? Okay, so let's have. <laughs> so this is interesting to me, right? Because all we want to do is sit. Yep. We put a gentle eater on him. He's had treats from Duke and I. We're not, you know, we're not brand new novel, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not buds, right? Clearly. And so, so now what are we getting? <laughs> avoiding. Right. So now he's avoiding. I don't, I don't want him to learn helplessness, which mm -hmm. is shown on some TV shows where they string him up and they just hold him. I've just asked him for a sit. Yeah. He's done it repeatedly for you. He knows how to sit. Um, but, uh, and I just want Duke on the other leash. And if I misjudge or he decides he's going to come yeah. after me, I want him to be. I want two leashes. Just gives us more control. Good boy. So he's not touching you now. <laughs> it just moves so he's not. Just so that he doesn't get that little bit of security. Go boy! Rebel! <laughs> and there's, a, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, don't misinterpret that. He's not sad. He's just a little shut down because, again, I think I think Duke explained it really nicely that he he was really controlling the situation, and the gentle leader completely takes that away. He is not a candidate for a choker collar. He's not a candidate for a prong collar or anything mm -hmm. aversive because that's going to throw him into. I got to get rid of this thing even faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very benign. I've got two dogs downstairs. They're big pity mixes. They walk on gentle ears all the time, and that's just just so that the woman that owns them doesn't get dragged down the street. Mm -hmm. Okay, they don't have any kind of issues like he does, but he's just lost control, <laughs> and, and he's avoiding a little bit. He suddenly won't eat so much anymore because he can't make all those decisions. Okay, but we're, but he's not sad, and we're not going to feel bad for him. This is exactly the kind of, he needs a little bit more of this mm -hmm. from you guys so that he just cannot play these games. Right? Um, again, he's one. He's not yet willing to follow through with all of those warnings he's giving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but as he approaches two, if we don't get this under control. Is gonna have a, we're going to have a much more serious mm -hmm. issue than he, than he already has. Um, so what I, I do would like to have be, I'd like to teach him touch and a few things or at least show you how to do that. And I'm wondering if, um, if we should show with Thor and then bring him back in so I can sort of show you how to do that, Stephanie and Adam, and then, and then and then have you guys do it with him after we show it with Thor? Because I don't think he's going to work for us now that we put this on him. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and, and if seems believing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so do you have another idea? Um, no, I don't know if you could talk him through it or, or if, it, if they're visual learners and need to see it. it I mean, it's... What's going to be easiest for you guys? See you in the afternoon. Okay. Well, if you want to see it then. Because it's going to be a team effort here. You've got to be able to work with them, too. So if you need to see it, then okay. I guess we should So what I'd it. like to do, let's see if you just drop your leash for a second. Here. Rebel. Rebel. Hey. Hey. Hi. Come on. Now that we had the initial discussion over with. Good boy. <laughs> I heard that burp. Good boy. You can get up. Hey, good boy. That's a good boy. What do you think? No? <laughs> Not reacting to the eye contact anymore with, with the gentle leader on either. So it's still about having choices. Fearful dogs do need choices. Good boy. Come on. Can you get up for me? Come on, Rebel. Why? Sit. Sit. Rebel. Sit. Rebel. Sit. 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 No, it's not going to sit. Rebel. Sit. 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 Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> it's not so bad. Good boy. Good boy. I'm good. It's giving you the hairy eyeball. Sit. Good boy. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay. All right, so I think he's going to be too shut down. So let's... um. Take him out while you bring him out. Yeah. Door. You want to take him out? Sure. He can just go out on the deck. Alright, so this is Thor. He's my 10-year-old yellow lab. He's, he has all the behaviors that I'm going to want Rebel to do, but since Rebel's not working with me, I want to show you how to sort of get it accomplished with mm -hmm. him, with Thor, and then we'll bring Rebel back in and see if he'll work with you guys. So, Thor, touch. <laughs> touch. So I want Rebel touch, to touch your hand, touch, again, and eventually, to start with, you're going to just, down, Thor, down, stay, it's hard to turn him off. 
So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your hand down in what I call a very assertive hand, not just kind of waving around, but assertive mm -hmm. hand. If you have to wiggle your fingers, go ahead. As soon as he comes and touches your hand, um, I want you to mark the behavior. So we can either mark it with, the, with each of you saying yes. My preference is I'm going to give you a clicker. Okay. And I may grab um, a sock because I think he seemed a little sensitive to it and I want it wrapped in something. So sit. And what it does is it marks the exact behavior of what you want him to do and his learning will be much faster that way. So the first part is you're going to put your hand down. As he touches it, you're going to click. And the test for this is, so after we get three of those, and it's not just sitting and touching. I don't think Rebel will just sit. He's going to get up and move around. Then it, it's movement to make sure that he'll follow it. Okay. So initially it's the touch. Then it's going to be just to follow it. Regardless of whether he touches it, doesn't matter at that point, just as long as he'll follow the hand. There's lots of things that we can do from the touch. But sometimes if, if dogs aren't going to sit or lie down, they need, to, they need to have a motion thing going on, we'll do the touch. Whenever he lies down, he's going to do that relaxed. Always. No choice. He's going to lie down and be relaxed, not be all sphinx-like and ready mm -hmm. to pounce. When you ask him to do something, you need to follow through with that. If you're, for whatever reason, you're in a hurry, you can't ask him, make that a conscious decision, and then just go out the door, get in the car. Mm -hmm. But if you've asked him to sit, he must sit. Okay? Mm -hmm. you can, we're going to use the food. You know, he's not taking food from me, so I didn't have many choices left. The other thing I want to show you with Thor that I know I cannot do with Rebel is body blocking. So if I asked him to sit and he did not, I would step into his space. See how he yields to me? Mm -hmm. right? Rebel needs to do that to both of you because he doesn't right now. And I have a pretty strong feeling, good boy, that if I stepped into his space like that, that he challenged me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know him well enough. And now is the time for you guys to really get this going with him so that when he gets to be two, he doesn't start to challenge you. If he starts to come back at you or bark in your face or something, you know, we're going to have to have a phone conversation or, <clears throat> again, the distance is going to make it challenging. So Thor yields to that space. It's also a way to make him sit. So you can say sit and step into him and then take the pressure off. So when he moves away, then you can, you can reinforce him by stepping away from him. That takes the pressure off the dog, okay? Um, so down. If you, if you, <laughs> down. It's hard to believe you're 10, but he loves to work. So let's say I asked for the sit and I did not get it. I could step into him and say sit, okay? And Thor is really sensitive to that because he respects space. He gets out of my way. I don't walk around my dogs, right? They have to get away. They have to move away from my space. Mm -hmm. This is sort of my dance space, if you will, and he stays out of it mm -hmm. and, uh, and moves and just yields to that. So he has to, it's called deferring. Rebel needs to defer to you guys more. Okay, so body blocking, the hand touch. We've done the sit. We've done the down. The gents leader, you can do just what I've done, which is you can just add the pressure until he sits. Oh, boy and then you can release the pressure as part of that reinforcement for him, okay, for Rebel. So I'm gonna give you this, kinda get familiar with that while I take Thor back down. So Duke comes in first. Were you playing with him? So keep him no. out with you. He gave me a direct warning. Look, don't turn your back to the camera. Uh, look at you, or what do you do? Hold on. Okay. 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 So he should be all right with Stephanie. You can look at me. So ask him to lie down. We'll go back to what he knows first. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Yep. So you can go ahead and lure him down if you need to. Rebel. Lay down. Lay down. Okay. Yep. Oh, stand back up. And hold him sort of away from you so he can't do all this sort of control. If it feels like it's controlling, it is. It looks like it is. Yeah. Okay, ask him to sit again. Sit. Rebel, okay. sit. Bring him around to you. Yes. That's mm -hmm. right. We'll let him lie down. And release the leash pressure. Good. Now stand in front of him. And I want you to ask him to sit. And you're going to move into his face. Sit. 
Yep. Sit. We're going to uh, pull, pull him up if you have to. Sit. So he's avoiding. Step. Take a step back. And ask him to sit again. Rebel, sit. And kind of move into his space. Sit. You can use the. Do you have treats? A little bit. A little bit. I'll give me a few more. So you can put them right on his nose and help him lure him up. It doesn't have okay. to be a battle. Rebel, sit. Right, put the treats right on his nose. Sit. Yes. Yep. So you're gonna lure, walk Rebel. into his face, and sort of pull him up a little bit if you can. Rebel. Sit. Yep, pull his head up so he's not fussing with the gents leader. Sit. Yeah, so now release the pressure on the gents leader. Good. There you go. Good. Okay, so ask for the down again. Lay down. Okay, you can have one for now because he's still. What you want some little words? Try to that game a little Sure. Stephanie yeah. takes some liver words from It's messy, so. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Slimy on here. Okay, so say sit. Let's lure him up with the treats and sit. We're gonna do a little work sit. with the gentle leader. Sit. Sit, Rebel. Sit. Yep, and walk into him. Keep pulling. Sit. Him up. Sit. Yes, and release the pressure. Oh, oh. Nope. Ask him to sit again. Rebel, sit. There. I'll pull it. You're gonna have to pull it up a little bit once it's un is under his foot. Yep. Go ahead and unstick it. Okay. Oh, come here. So he's gonna sit. Yes. Good. Yep. And he can have another piece for sitting. Release the pressure on the gentle leader just a little bit. Yep. Good. And you can have another one. Rebel. Good. Now ask for the down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. That's a stress shake off. <laughs> so it's very stressful Lay down. being out of control. <laughs> Lay down. Lay down. Yep, and pull him away from me so he's not rubbing all over. Oh. Good. And ask him to lie down again. Lay down. Yep. Mm, just wait. Just wait. It's more about, okay, now he can have one when he's calm. Not when he's all squirming around trying to get the gentle leader off. Good. Let's ask him to sit again. Rebel, sit. 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 Rebel, sit. Sit. Yep. Walk sit. Up. Yes, good. And release the pressure on the gentle leader. Rebel. So he gets, he gets three sort of, we're walk, you're body blocking him, walking into his space, we're using the gentle leader to pull him up, and you're luring him, right? Mm -hmm. There's, so he just needs to play the game. And that's not a complicated thing to ask for a sit yeah. from a down. Yeah. Um, and then he'll get all three reinforcements when he sits. He'll get the treat, you'll release just a little pressure, like you don't have to give him four yeah. feet of leash, just a little pressure on the leash, um, and then you can just you can just sort of stop your forward mm -hmm. motion into them. Okay, Adam, let's see. I'd like you to have a turn before we um, move on. Good. And ask him to lie down. So let's go back to the sit. Nope, oh, pull him away from oh, Stephanie. Yep. So he's going to test the game. It's a whole new game now. New person. Don't let him sit on your foot. Rebel, lay down. <laughs> sit on Duke's lap. <laughs> you can move him yeah. back over here. There. Ask for the sit first. Sit. Oh, let's you might, might have to lying. unstick the. It's the only problem when they start fussing with it. So turn him towards you. Yes. Sit. Yes. Good. And you can have a little piece. Lay down. Yep. And wait till he calms. All right, we can have a piece for the minutes. And I'm going to have you ask for the sit again from the down. So same thing, you're going to ask, use, no, the, use the lure. Sit. Yep, and now make him sit. sit. Straight sit. up to the gentle leader. Sit. Sit. Yes, and release it. Release that pressure. Good. Mm -hmm. Look. I didn't like you. No. 
<laughs> he's having he's um he's having some uh Sit. good good so let's just and I'm just go ahead and have a seat in the chair so how does all this feel let's just sort of process we've given you a lot of information um, he's a tough dog he is. He's a tough dog. Um, I also want to be clear that you don't, you didn't make him this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, people, generally people don't have skills like Duke and I have, right? Like if he, if I saw him as a puppy and he was obnoxious or calling the shots or something, Duke and I would just both intuitively, you know, do something. But it, but it doesn't take away his fear issues. Mm -hmm. And and you just didn't make him this way. He's born however he's born, and we can train him and, and try to keep him in his operant brain, but I think you two need to really um, always be assessing where you're at with him, or if you just want to live a sequestered life and have him just be home, because yeah. if he continues like this, he's just going to be a home dog. Yeah. You're not going to take him places once he starts to get into social development, and when people come over, he's going to be away. He's going to be crated in a room. You can give him a big bone. He can have all sorts of glorious things happen mm -hmm. when he's there, but he's not a dog that I trust. Mm -hmm. I have not had to double leash a dog in many yeah. years. And if I, you know, and I double leashed him because if he decided he's going to come after me, I need somebody that I can trust that's going to take him away from mm -hmm. me. And then I can, you know, we can hold him in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to paint, uh, I don't want to give you false pretenses. I also don't want to paint doom and gloom. You know, I'm sort of treading yeah. in the middle, but he is potentially a dangerous dog. Mm -hmm. He really is. And the fact that he was out on the porch and Duke had to muscle him away um, because he gave you a hard eye. He urinated, looked at me and growled, and then uh, sat moving, so I thought that might be the time to <laughs> hold him away. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, he won't, he won't put up with this from a stranger. Mm -hmm. Right, so he's not, if, he's, <laughs> if he did that with Duke, Duke doesn't live with me, so he, he's not a candidate for board and train because I don't mm -hmm. know that I could safely handle him. And I, mm -hmm. you know, my, I have kids in the house, so that's not, it's going to have to come from you. Whether we find a place to meet in the middle and review training, or you, you know, send me the videotapes and we review training, but, um, you know, dogs, and, and I, I want to caution you because I believe he has the potential to turn on you too. The fact that he's not just sitting on your foot, it's called an anal plant. He's parking his butt right on your foot and if he does it to you. And it's something when we're assessing dogs in the shelter, it's a huge warning signal. He probably would not make it out of a shelter because he's not the best candidate of a pit bull terrier. Mm -hmm. and, and in shelter world, where I, you know, I worked for 10 years in a shelter, when we're placing dogs out in the public, we want the best of the best, particularly for this breed, because we want them to be mm -hmm. great ambassadors of the breed, and he's not. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, the irony is he's probably okay with other dogs, right? You've said he's pretty good with yeah. other dogs, but um, his people stuff is pretty serious, mm -hmm. and um, uh, he's just not gonna tolerate a lot of frustration or, or stuff from from strangers. One, the wrong person gives them the eye contact and that's going to be a problem. And as you guys go through this, um, I want you to either journal it separately. You're going to have to have honest conversations, particularly if he starts to come back at you, like, mm -hmm. I, like the barking that he was doing at me. Um, if you start to see that happening at you guys, I need to know about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd keep him on the gentle leader and, and let him just drag the gentle leader and leash around your house while you're starting the new, new, you know, new leadership, new skills. He doesn't get on the couch. He lies down. He doesn't make any decisions whatsoever. And you know, this is nice, but this is just oh, like he clearly knows that the rules have changed. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows that Duke and I know now what's what <laughs> what he's sort of mm -hmm. uh, signaling. So. Um, Tell me, I asked the question, then I started talking again. So just, I know you haven't had a chance to talk separately, but so where are either one of you or both of you with all of this? It's overwhelming, but. Yes. One way or the other, I'm, I'm going to love him just the same. So okay. I'm willing to do whatever I, I have to do to work with him. Could turn into a slight management 
yeah. know, training and a slight management. Somebody comes to the house, goes away in the crate yeah. or something like that. Right. He's a great house dog. Mm -hmm. You know, a right. lot of people live with their dogs like that forever. You're not going to do any agility or any, you know, stuff like that. So I'm glad you have a crate. I want you to use it when you're not at home so that, that he just doesn't have the freedom. The f all freedom, all access to everything will come from the two of you. Okay. So during the day, like when I'm at work, he yep. should be in a crate? Okay. Yeah, if he's just sleeping. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's going to be sleeping, probably not doing much anyway when you're, yeah. when you're home. But it's going to give you the opportunity when you come home to determine when he can come out. He needs to sit or lay down in the crate, at least be still and quiet mm -hmm. before he comes out. And boy, the first time you ask him to do that, he, he, it may take a while before he comes out. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's 60 seconds, maybe that's three minutes, if you can time it, because yeah. it will probably feel longer than it does. But once he's calm, okay, then he can come out. Uh, whatever you normally do, outside to go to the bathroom, ball playing, he's going to sit or lie down for the ball. And um, if he starts to do the jumpy thing, if you don't want the gentle leader on at that point, at least use that limited slip collar. Mm -hmm. Because that's the other thing, when I asked, had, has he slipped out of collars? Yeah, he's figured out how to get out of that control, yeah. right? You can't even control him with, with a regular collar on because he manipulates that. So that limited slip co collar will go home with you so that you can just use it and he doesn't get to make those choices. Um, sitting or lying down before he goes, before he's fed, before he goes to the doors, before he gets in the car, before he gets out of the car. Mm -hmm. And any time he comes up to you and says, hey, I want to get on the couch, or hey, I want to play ball, or hey, I want to be fed, that's your opportunity to say, great, now I know what you want, now I can do some training. Mm -hmm. But he's food motivated, I don't think that's going to be a problem once you get him home. Adam, how about you, where are you with all of this? He needs a lot of work, but, yep. you know. What we got to do with them. So. Okay. All right. Good. Again, I hate. I. I'm kind of. I'm treading down the middle. I mean, I see his behavior. I know what that can be for the future. He's one, so a lot of hard work and training and leadership um, can make the difference. And I think Duke also had a good point that he can just be. You know, he can be great with you guys in the house, and people come over. He gets created. Mm -hmm. And like it, like I said, give him a big bone. It does not does not need to be punitive from his perspective. It's just yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. And hey, and he may look forward. Oh, someone's coming. He may run down the hall and go in the crate, anticipating the bone, which would be great. Mm -hmm. Which would be great. Okay. Any other questions? Um, the backing up and sitting on our feet. What? Why is he doing that? What? Um, his it's a, it, what does it mean? Um, it can be some form of marking and big old time control. And he knows exactly where you are by planting his butt on you. Yeah. You know, dogs don't touch us by mistake. Mm -hmm. um, they just don't. They're very aware of where their body is and what's happening. He didn't blow through my leg by mistake, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's a very conscious thing that, that he's doing. Um, and just don't let him do it. Mm -hmm. On this week's episode, we finished our interview with Adam, Stephanie, and Rebel, the one-year-old pity mix, with some very intense fear issues. And as we went through this shooting today, putting the gentle leader on Rebel was a little much for him to handle in the confines of my living room. And as you saw, when we put it on, he laid down. He did give me some very hard eye contact, which is a warning. And we did have to have a double leash on him to ensure basically my safety since he was a little more focused on me. And if I had to do it over again, we probably would have not put the gentle leader on him and we would have just given Rebel some more space because putting the gentle leader on him took away his ability to make choices. Although the choices that he were making without the gentle leader, the coming towards me, the taking the treats, the barking right in my face, and then retreating was getting to be a little worrisome for me. So he is a very, very challenging dog. And um, there are no simple answers to fear-based aggression, which is what Rebel has, along with some pretty intense anxiety. He's only one. I really cannot emphasize that enough, that as he goes through this last developmental stage, which is social development, and it kind of culminates at the age of two, Rebel may start acting on all of the warnings that he is giving us now. So 
Um, again, the folks have their jobs cut out for them. Training is definitely going to help. Getting them to a veterinarian that is um, a, an expert or a professional in pharmacology would be a very good step and managing him very carefully within their home. He's not going to be the social butterfly. He's not going to be a therapy dog. He can go for walks uh, in wooded areas, away from people. Um, and I would walk him on a gentle leader once uh, Adam and Stephanie desensitized to him and he adjusted to that. And he would adjust to it better with them in their own home than uh, what, you were, what you were watching here. But it was a tricky situation. There was clearly some risk um, for me because of his forward and back, forward and back movement, although his age sort of inhibited him from actually acting out on that. So that was the purpose for the double leash. Um, it was a pretty intense day, and um, I look forward to hearing some reports from Adam and Stephanie on how they're doing with Rebel. So thanks for tuning in today, and I look forward to seeing you next week on Doggy Dilemmas. Having a doggy dilemma? Denise can help. www.denisemazzola.com Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years of experience. She specializes in new puppy consultations, rowdy dogs, aggressive dogs, and private lessons.